Hello students, so let us discuss few previous year's questions like June 2022 dermatology questions. So here a question was asked that a 30 year old pregnant female presented to dermatology department with given condition, what is the likely diagnosis? Now what you can see in this image, you can see that the patient is having this brownish discoloration over face like cheek, nose, chin area, upper lip area and pregnant female. Okay, so clearly this is a case of melasma and when melasma occurs in pregnancy, we also call it colasma. So colasma is the answer here. Why? Because melasma presents with brownish discoloration. Why? Because of excessive melanogenesis and in the treatment of this condition, what we give? We give tyrosinase inhibitors like hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is the treatment. And the predisposing factor is generally uh, pregnancy. It can also be due to excessive sun exposure or OCP intake and sometimes also associated with some endocrine disorders like hypothyroidism. Now, some of, his, uh, some of you might get confused between melasma and colasma. So, remember, melasma and colasma are same. The only difference is that when the underlying cause is pregnancy, then we call it Colasma, though there are other causes as well, like I told you, sun exposure, OCP, or hypothyroidism, then all those are known as melasma. Okay, so when melasma occurs in pregnancy, we call it colasma. So that's why colasma is a better choice than melasma here. While SLE and rosacea both present with red lesions, that is erythematous lesions, and how to differentiate these two? In SLE, the nasolabial folds are spared. While in rosacea, these nasolabial fold can be involved. Now, in the next question, 26 year old patient presented with a skin lesion as shown below. What you can see? You can see a lesion which is present here. This is thick lesion. So, such thick elevated large lesions are known as plaques. And you can see slight redness or erythema is also there. And there is little bit of scaling also present. So, all these can be seen in the image. Now, what they are saying? Biopsy shows presence of multiple neutrophilic floci in stratum corneum. So, do you know of any condition where the lesions are plaque? They are red in color erythematous. They have a scaling present over them. And when you do biopsy, you will get neutrophils in stratum corneum. Yes, the answer is psoriasis. Now, why answer is psoriasis? Because in psoriasis, two microapsises are seen. Munro's microapsis and Kogo's pasius. Both these are collections of neutrophils. That is what they are saying, neutrophilic foci. Okay, so both are collections of neutrophils. When they are very superficial, that is in stratum corneum, we call them Munro's microapsis. But when they are deep in Malpighian layer, that is lower portion, portion of the epidermis, then we call it Kogo's pasius. Okay. Now, Kobner's phenomena is seen in all except Okay, so it is seen in all except and the answer is herpes. Now, what is Kobner's phenomena? Kobner's phenomena is also known as isomorphic phenomena where patient when produces uh, trauma or scratches the skin, there the new type of lesions start developing which are very similar to the previous condition. Okay, so like if a patient is having psoriasis and patient scratches along the line of scratch, the similar psoriasis like lesions start developing. This is known as Kobner's phenomena. Now, why this happens? Because when the patient scratches, what happens? Uh, at the site of trauma, new immunological process starts and such lesions start developing. So, this is seen in immunological conditions. This is also known as true Kobner's phenomena. So, true Kobner's phenomena is seen in immunological conditions like vitiligo, psoriasis and lichen planus. All these are immunological conditions. So, it is not seen in herpes which is infective condition. But remember that false Kobner's can be seen in infective conditions. False Kobner's, why we call it false? Because sometimes what happens due to auto inoculation of the infection, new lesions can develop. Like if there is a lesion here and patient scratches, then along the line of trauma due to auto inoculation, new lesions can develop. That is known as false Kobner's. And this can be seen in viral warts and molluscum contagiosum. That also not seen in herpes. So that's why the answer here is herpes. Which of the following is the causative agent for acne fulminance? See, acne fulminance is a severe type of acne and normally the most common type of acne is known as acne vulgaris. The most severe type of acne is known as acne 
कॉन्ग्लो बाटा बट समाइम्स वॉट हैपन्स दैट एक्ने इज एसोसिएटेड विद सिस्टमिक फीचर्स इट बिकम सिवियर एंड एसोसिएटेड विद सिस्टमिक फीचर्स लाइक फीवर एंड ऑल सो वी कॉल इट एक्ने फलमिनस ओके सो देर इज अ रोल ऑफ बैक्टीरिया इन द एटीओलॉजी ऑफ एक्ने एंड दैट इज नोन एज प्रोप्योनी बैक्टीरियम एक्ने so this is the name of the bacteria in short we call it p acne also and this has role in the etiology of acne in a majority of the acne especially in the fulminant type of acne so answer here is propionobacterium acne identify the type of psoriasis in the given image now what you can see here you can see very small raised lesions over the trunk and in a child so in a child over trunk these very small dew drop like lesions are present this is a type of psoriasis which is known as guttate psoriasis and this usually develop after upper respiratory tract infection that is like if a patient develops uh, streptococcal sore throat infection and then start developing psoriasis like lesions which are very small in a child over trunk then we label it as guttate psoriasis okay so answer here is guttate psoriasis erythrodermic psoriasis here whole skin becomes red in pustular psoriasis lot of pus filled lesions are seen that is pustules are seen normally in psoriasis extensors get involved but if opposite happens that is if flexors get involved like axilla or umbilicus get involved then we call it inverse psoriasis so this is which type of psoriasis guttate psoriasis now what is used to diagnose the condition given below in the image okay so what you can see in the image that over chest so over chest hypopigmented lesions are present these hypopigmented lesions are small they are macules as you can see these small macules are present but in the central portion they have merged together and formed a large lesion that is they are forming patch as well so do you know of any condition where hypopigmented macules and patch start developing especially over upper trunk like chest back shoulders yes there is one fungal condition which can lead to this known as petriasis versicolor so this is a case of petriasis versicolor where hypopigmented lesions are generally seen though sometimes they can be dark in color as well and this is caused by malezasia is that is malezasia uh, furfur or malezasia globosa now in the diagnosis of this condition we can do two things one you can prepare 10% qh mount and on preparing 10% qh mount you will get a spaghetti and meatball appearance another thing which you can do is you can do wood slamp examination and when you examine these lesion under wood slamp light so when you examine these lesions under wood slamp light they produce yellow fluorescence or if yellow is not there then apple green fluorescence so yellow or apple green fluorescence is seen under wood slamp light in cases of petriasis versicolor so that's why the answer here is wood slamp a 5 year old infant is seen with a rash on the nose so rash on the nose cheek and forehead as shown in the image in the image you can see these very tiny small cysts which are present okay very very tiny they look very much like uh, white heads or comedons okay on examination they were noted that they were pearly opalescent white epidermal inclusion cyst so you can see these are the small cysts what is the most probable diagnosis so remember that these are melia okay if it is single we call it melium and if they are multiple we call it melia so plural is melia so these are melia and melia are what these are keratin cyst these are keratin cyst all of you know keratin is present in the skin so sometimes it goes deep and a cyst is formed around it now this keratin cyst sometimes can be formed de novo de novo means that without any disease they start forming over the skin so generally the common site is face like here you can see they are present over nose cheek and forehead so common site is face so sometimes they might develop de novo but sometimes they develop where the lesions of bullous pemphigoid okay so any blistering condition commonly bullous pemphigoid where blisters are seen wherever these blisters heal wherever these blister heal there these keratin cysts are formed so you might find melia formation wherever the lesions of bullous pemphigoid heal or sometimes they might be seen de novo over face without any reason they might start developing due to keratin a uh, cystic uh, formation uh, around the keratin so these you can see these are keratin cysts known as melia so thank you very much hopefully this was
बेनिफिशियल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू